I'm joined today by uh, Dee Kerwick Crisp um, from West Nottinghamshire College, um, who uh, will also be presenting. So just a little bit about what's happening today. Um, what we'll be covering is the, um, the, the history of teacher matting. I'll give you a bit of background. I'll be talking about what is teacher matic, be talking about the, the impact that teacher matic is having on workloads. Uh, most of today's session is going to be a demonstration, and I know that we've got people in the room who are using Teachermatic, and also people in the room who are new to it. And the uh, there'll be I'll be showing a whole range of different generators, and I'll be showing some new generators that are coming up. Um, then I'll be handing over to Dee, who will be talking about how Teachermatic is being used at West Knotts College. Um, I'll be showing you some feedback and some examples of um, how um, organisations who are using Teachermatic are making use of this platform. I'll be talking about how the Teachermatic community works. And finally, we'll have time for some questions. And if you've got any questions, um, please um, pop them in the, in the chat. And if you want to just uh, go to the chat now and maybe say hello, say uh, where you're from, um, yep, Samantha, it is being recorded, um, and um, we'll uh, try our best to keep an eye on the chat if you've got any questions, and we'll but we'll take most of the questions at the end. Um, okay, so a little bit of history, a little bit of um, background to Teachermatic. Um, these are the uh, the four people behind it. I just, I'm just looking. I've got the same top, and I do have other tops, uh, honestly. Um, so uh, my colleagues are Ollie Stern, Isam Babukan, and um, Jeff Elliott are the uh, the four directors behind Teachermatic. And uh, we came up this idea um, just under two two years ago. So um, there was some funding for a UFI. Um, what UFI were making available. Uh, we were having a chat amongst ourselves about potential projects um, with digital that we might put together. And something that we were all becoming interested in was um, ChatGPT and these large language models. That This was kind of before they'd really hit the headlines, but we'd started having a look at these and um, you know, I'm sure that uh, when you all first came across um, these uh, technologies, we were all absolutely blown away by it. That um, it's like something's dropped out of the next century, an incredible technology that will write stuff for you. Um, but at the same time, and for those of you that don't know me, I've, I've worked in uh, education since the late 80s for the last 20 plus years. I've been a, a leader in ed tech. Um, in a, a large middle-sized college in uh, the West Midlands, Heart of Worcestershire College. I've done a lot of work getting teachers using technology. And it was pretty clear to me that while this was incredibly powerful technology, it isn't easy to use. That to get the best out of these large language models, things like ChatGPT, et cetera, you've got to be very good at this thing called prompt engineering. And prompt engineering, isn't exactly straightforward. And it was pretty clear to me, having worked with lots of teachers over the years, that the majority of teachers do not have the time to learn how to do prompt engineering. It's, it's a, quite a complex skill. And to get it working well, these are all of the different things that you've got to be able to do. That's a lot of stuff. And I think that certainly, you know, turns out how things are. When I've been into college and asked, you know, how many people regularly are using these large language models, things like um, ChatGPT, Copilot, Claude, etc. It's very much a minority sport. It's not something that, that, that the majority of staff are doing. And uh, I think this sort of image, and I'll be most of the images apart from those ones of me and my colleagues um, today in the spirit of Teachermatic are AI, uh, generated and this to me is sort of you know what I think a, a lot of teachers response is when they're shown chat GPT screen you know all you've got is a little space to type what do I do here I've got to do all this prompt engineering stuff that's quite confusing so we came up with this idea to build Teachermatic 
a platform that would take all the pomp engineering out of AI so that teachers could easily make use of this technology without having to be prompt engineering experts. And Teachermatic, our byline is built by teachers for teachers. And then we were developing Teachermatic. We started off working with three teacher training managers, real experts in pedagogy. We built a prototype, plat prototype platform. We then rolled that out to 50 teachers. We got a lot of feedback from them, did focus groups, did surveys, improved the platform. We then rolled that out to 300 teachers. And since we launched Teachermatic, we've taken lots and lots and lots of feedback from hundreds of teachers. We consulted, we meet, we have regular termly community meetings. And everything we do is driven by the teacher community that use it. And I think that's a very important thing, message that I want to get across. Teachermatic is built by teachers for teachers. So in just over one year, what have we achieved? We launched Teachermatic back in April 2023. Um, and since then, in just over a year, we've got over 160 organizational customers. We've got over 20,000 users. And uh, when we launched, well, we actually had 18 generators. We had 10 in some of our pre launch stuff. We started with 18 generators, and we've now got over 70 um, generators. And all of this is from the feedback we get from com community. People come to us and say, can you do a generator that does X, Y, Z, et cetera? And then we um, talk to the community. If that's a generator that people want to see built, We'll, we'll look at what the community want and then we'll build those generators. Um, with just the four of us, this was becoming a massive challenge running this ever growing business. And we were delighted um, that we got approached towards the end of last year by a, a large ed tech com uh, company in Switzerland called Avalane. And uh, following some talks, um, they've acquired us. And uh, in this picture, you can see some of our colleagues from Avalane. And while the core people, myself, Jeff, Ollie and Isam, are very much still running Teachermatic, driving it forward. We're now looking enough to have a large company behind us, giving a lot of support at the back end, giving us lots of additional ideas, etc. that's making it much easier for us to improve Teachermatic and, and scale up, etc. We are in the process of taking on additional staff and we are continually improving and innovating the platform. And those of you who have been with us for a long while, uh, will have seen that. OK, so what is Teachermatic? I will be doing a demonstration shortly, but basically this is a screenshot of it. It's an innovative, easy to use AI platform for educators. We've got 70 generators, more being added all the time. It uses ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 4, uh, and also a large language model, uh, uh, a European um, based open source model called Mistral. And these generators are designed to carry out a wide range of everyday activities. And think about Teachermatic like this. It's your virtual AI assistant. So think about it. It's not here to replace a teacher. What it'll do is it'll write a great first draft. And then it's down to the teacher to look at that first draft that Teachermatic will write and then put their own ideas, their own in creativity in it. So it's not going to replace teachers. Something that uh, you might want to consider, though, is over time, teachers who use AI may replace teachers who don't uh, use AI, um, but it's there to support teachers, to make their lives easier. So why did we build it? To unleash the potential of this incredible technology, to democratise it, to make it available to everybody, to help teachers manage this ever increasing workload. You know, I've been a teacher myself. I'm from a teaching family. My daughter's a teacher. My mum's a teacher. Very much know about the workload teachers are under. Um, to help with staff well-being, to help, you know, which is a massive issue in education at the moment. And also for the IT managers, it is a secure and managed solution. And just a few figures to sort of illustrate what a problem there is around teacher workloads and uh, this then leads to this crisis that we've got in retention and recruitment, that the number of new teachers leaving after one year in 2021 was nearly 13 percent. In 8.8 um, percent of teachers are quitting 
every year at the moment and that's not retiring that's not including those ones are retiring that's the the churn the amount of teachers who are dropping out um and that's higher in college as 25 percent of college teachers leave after one year um and three years in um half of college teachers quit so we've got a real problem in education around recruiting and uh retaining teaching staff and we'd like to think that teachermatic is a uh, real solution to that and finally and I've certainly seen this in colleagues over the years, and I've seen this increasing. 77% of 3,000 teachers in one particular survey reported um, issues with mental health. So I'm going to give you one illustration of how Teachermatic has helped one teacher. And this is uh, Lauren, who's from uh, 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 South Gloucestershire and Stroud College. And uh, she uh, came to me after I did a presentation there and said that basically Teachermatic had saved her job for us. She was about to quit. And because of the help Teachermatic gave us, she was able to continue. So uh, this is a brief clip, a clip of Lauren. OK, so that's just one individual case. Um, more systematically, we've done a survey of our users and the average time saved per week that came out of that survey uh, for teachers is 3.8 hours. That's huge. And I'll show you in this demonstration how that can easily be achieved. Um, feedback from another one of our colleges here. Apologies, I'm picking up the sound. I did share sound. I'll try again. One moment. Let's see if this improves. Is it even for my, my colleagues' specialism? So I might not know as much about something as. Could you let me know in the chat? Is the sound coming through? What do you think the and we've got some more videos, so hopefully the sound will come through on those. Sorry if it, it, it didn't come through then. Um, OK, so more feedback at one particular college, the digital um, and professional development manager uh, talking about his staff saving uh, six to, to eight hours uh, per week. Uh, also, I say big thanks to the uh, UFI who uh, gave us the initial funding for Teachmatic. OK, I'm going to do a demonstration now, so if you just bear with me while I. Pull up the screen, so this is the Teachermatic platform, so this is what you see when you log on to Teachermatic. Um, 70 plus generators. And the teacher scrolls down. And accesses each generator. And any generator they want to use, they just click on use. The generators can be sorted by sector here, primary, secondary, vocational, higher education, by type of activity here, planning in class, independent study, assessment, research, etc. And we've got some management generators that you can assess there. Um, you can also save your work and your saved generations go into the saved area there. You can favourite generators, so if there are any generators that you use a lot, if you just click on the heart for those, you'll see that then goes to the top of your screen and that is uh, maintained there. OK, so what I'm going to show you now is how these generators work. So I'll just quickly demonstrate one live and then I'm going to show you that I built here. So say you want to do a multiple choice quiz. You simply click on the multiple choice generator, you put in the topic. You can, if you want, upload a file, put in a URL that can include being a YouTube URL. You say how many questions you want. You can manipulate the difficulty. That's on many of the generators. You click on generate and that will write you the, the quiz. 
you sort of it. So there we go. So that's written the 10 multiple choice questions for me. OK, so let me go through some that I've already prepared up front. So the first generator I want to show you is the um, scheme of work generator. Um, and so this is, you know, if you imagine you're, you've just been given a new, a new unit to, um, to, to teach. And so the first thing you might want to do is do a scheme of work. So the one I'm using as an example here is anatomy and physiology for sport. Um, and so you put the unit title into the title there. You can choose to force some particular topics into any things that you want to make sure occur there. You can put in a URL um, there if, you, if there's a particular URL, and that could be the, the specification um, as to um, you know on Pearson, ZXL, etc. Um, the link to that there. What I've done here is I've actually uploaded the unit document for anatomy and physiology and sport there. Um, you say how many sessions you want. You click on generate. And that then writes the scheme of work. OK. And then, right, what are we going to do from here? The next thing we might want to do is do some lesson plans. So I've taken one of those topics from the scheme of work, the digestive system, the role of digestion, absorption in sports, nutrition, etc. And I've just pasted that into the lesson plan. And then with the lesson plan tool, um, you can put in how long the lesson is. You can focus on particular skills, so sort of cross curricular skills. So there I put in uh, numeracy. Something that we're really proud of in Teachermatic is you can specify particular learning needs that you might have in a group. So here I've said that I've got a learner with um, ADHD and another learner with English as an additional language. You can also specify which cognitive domains from Bloom's taxonomy that you wish to see. So I specified three of those, clicked on generate, and then that's written me the lesson plan. And I can then export that, say as a Word document. There that is a Word document. And you see then as a teacher, you can copy and paste that into your own um, uh, lesson planning documentation at your organisation and you probably want to edit it but it means that rather than you know when you're doing your lesson planning or your scheme of work as I shown previously you're not starting with a blank piece of paper but you've got something that's written by this digital assessment and um, you can then edit it and make it your own. So then moving on, I've done the lesson plan. I want some stuff to do in that lesson. So one of my very favourite tools with Teachermatic is the learning activities tool. And what this does is it enables you to come up with ideas for group activities. So I've say, right, I'm teaching nutrition for sport and exercise. So I put that in the topics there. I've said how many activities I want. Five. Again, I've got a complexity slider. And then there are five ideas that are coming up. OK, I see some of you are having trouble with the screen. If I turn off my camera, that might help a little bit. Um, so uh, there we go. Um, I hope you can all see that reasonably clearly. It is being recorded, so if you're not seeing it big enough, you hopefully you'll see it in the recording. Um, and so that's come up with five learning activities ideas, uh, doing a research and present around a particular aspect of nutrition, a meal planning assignment, a food diary analysis. So as a teacher, this gives you some great creative ideas. And if you want some more, you just click on regenerate and that gives you some more ideas. Um, a similar tool is a good lesson will involve 
you having some good classroom questions. So again, I put in sports nutrition, so they want five questions. I've got, so again, Bloom's taxonomy here, which will help decide the sort of questions I get. I've got the complexity slider, and that's given me five questions to take into the classroom as a teacher to kick a session off, to get the, um, the, the session going. The next tool I'm showing you is the, the glossary tool. And uh, glossary tool, a great tool, it you know, says what it's done. Say you're teaching in the digestive system and you want to give your students a glossary on all the sort of the technical termination uh, term, uh, terms in, in uh, the digestive system. You put 30 areas that you uh, entries that you want to have. And then that produces a glossary for you. And again, you can export that in a range of different formats. You can also build PowerPoints with Teachermatic. So in this case, I want a PowerPoint on sports nutrition. So I put that in as a title. I could add a URL, some specific topics in. I haven't done that. I've said, right, I want eight slides. And this is the PowerPoint that that built for me. So you see it builds a nice PowerPoint with appropriate images on sports nutrition. And it does that in less than a minute. We've just introduced a similar tool called the slideshow outliner. So this is only just um, produced, uh, uh, gone live. And this will give you a more sort of bullet point PowerPoint text, which you then copy and paste. So if you've not had a go with that one, do have a go with that. It's, it's proven very popular. Another new tool, which you may not have seen as yet, it's, it's down at the bottom, we've just introduced it, um, is the YouTube-based content generator. And here you put in a YouTube URL and you've got a range of different things you can choose. A worksheet, 30-minute lesson plan, 60-minute lesson plan, summary, projects. So in this case, I've selected worksheet and that's produced a worksheet on YouTube for, on, on that video. And similarly, there's always the pain with Teams where you've got to do this. Um, I put in a lesson plan here and that's produced a uh, lesson plan based on that YouTube video. Uh, the next tool, again, a real favourite of mine is um, the Ask the Expert. So this is one that you would use in class. Um, D sort of be ready in three or four minutes. Um, and in this case, I'm saying, let's bring a sports nutritionist into the classroom. And I'm asking that sports nutritionist to prepare a diet plan for a 35 year old woman who's a park runner and is trained training for a marathon. And this is a really nice um, tool because you can get the students interacting with it. Um, and the student might say, oh, that's very interesting. But, you know, I'm a vegan, so I want a, a diet plan for a vegan. And so I've changed that question there. Please produce a, a vegan diet plan. And you see, and so there, the AI expert nutritionist, yes, there, there is a recording, I've seen that question, has then produced a diet plan for a vegan runner. A similar tool is the Ask Someone Famous tool. And with the Ask Someone Famous tool, you can put in any favorite famous person, living or dead, real or fictional. And again, this is a fabulous tool to use in the classroom that you can put this up and you can get your students interacting with any famous person. The students can come up with the questions. So in this case, I've uh, chosen to keep with the sports um, theme, one of the most famous sportsmen ever, Usain Bolt. And I've asked him the question, could you describe your diet while you were train training for the Olympics? And so you see Teachermatic has then answered that question as Usain Bolt, using all of the information that AI can come up with from the internet on Usain Bolt. And um, that's given an answer. And I certainly know from listening to him that he, he's certainly a big fan of chicken and that's, that, that, that's um, being picked up there. 
OK, I'm going to pause now briefly and I'm going to ask uh, Dee to uh, to talk a bit about um, teachermatic at West Knotts College. So Dee, I'm going to stop screen share. Oh, you, uh, yeah, you're taking over. Wonderful. Dee's got a meeting with her principal at quarter to two, so uh, you can understand that uh, uh, she does have to leave us in 15 minutes. Off you go, Dee. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, first of all, is that showing correctly as it, it is, should yes. do? That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed for that. It's really good to be with you this afternoon. I am such a fan of Teachermatic and AI in general, but like Peter said, I'm very aware that that's a step too far for many teachers. Teachermatic's built this amazing bridge so we can really use t um, AI impactfully in the classroom. So I work at West Knotts College. I am teaching and learning coach brackets digital. I've been in ed tech since the dawn of time. Peter will have a competition sometime about who's been in it longest. Um, I remember before there was a computer and I have to say that AI has been the single most amazing transformational change that we've seen since maybe search engines and Teachermatic really has captured that and brought it to us. So that's that's me. Um, the context of West Knotts College, just so you know where I'm coming from on this, we're uh, an FE college in the in the Midlands. We've got, I asked how many learners and I got, oh, somewhere between 4,000 and 10,000. So, you know, broad, broad range as ever in FE. We first saw the Teachermatic at the BLC conference last year and rarely, but I got excited about it. So we bought 50 licenses, gave them to a group of teachers across the college in each department. Some of them are digital champions, some of them aren't. And we just said, use it, try it, see where you go with it. And they're reporting, as P Peter said, an impact on workload. Um, but also the sparkle in their eyes when they talk about what they've been able to achieve with their learners has to be seen to be believed. I walked into a maths workroom this morning to talk about Teachermatic and a teach, maths teacher turned around to me and said, I love it, love it, love it quote today from a maths teacher. She's using it to create multi-choice quizzes, which she uploads to look it and she's finding that's amazing for revision so we onboarded our teachers some were resistant some are hesitant a lot are very scared of ai they think it's um going to replace them or they think it's not as good as they are and as peter said very much first draft often very much first draft we had a training program, we've familiarised teachers, we've had workshops, department training, one-to-one, -one. we've done, done a, a variety of things. So that's how we've onboarded our teachers. So what you really want to see is examples of how it's been used, I suspect. Um, it's really helped teachers to be freed up from some of the more mundane admin and given them time to be really quite creative. It's been used differently by new teachers and existing teachers. New teachers, uh, we've got other colleges on the line, I can see. So you'll know that in FE we have this unique thing that we have people coming into the classroom who have never taught before. And Peter talked about a staff turnover of 25% in FE being higher than the norm. And in part, that's because people come in expert in their field, but they've never taught before. And Teachmatic, I know, was designed with that in mind, and that's where it's been really impactful. So whereas you ask um, somebody who, who's come in to teach plumbing to write a learning objective and they go a what you go, a learning objective you're a teacher now but you can generate your learning objectives with teachermatic and suddenly you have high class learning objectives that you can easily see how to assess so it's made a huge impact on some of our newer teachers in that way Somebody mentioned in the chat multiple choice quizzes that has been without a shadow of a doubt the most popular feature that ability to make multiple choice quizzes 
that you can export into Microsoft Forms to bang straight into a PowerPoint takes about four minutes from beginning to end to assess a lesson really clearly, really thoroughly, and you've got the data to back it up. You can export from multi-choice quizzes into Kahoot. That was usually a stage too far for teachers to get the formatting exactly right for a Kahoot. A lot of teachers like Kahoot, and they found that really helpful. Block it, quizzes, zizzes. All of those things, it'll just give you a multi-choice quiz. And that's what the maths teacher was using. She was using that quiz generator to really help her learners there. And she was so excited by that because it's a very hard to engage class. It's one I teach as well. Um, and they're quite a hard class to engage with something like revision. And she's found that they're absolutely 100% on board with that. Um, some people have used it for personalised feedback because Peter, just to help me here a little bit, you don't give the data back to ChatGPT, do you? It's ring fenced within. Absolutely. This is one of the advantages of Teachermatic is that when you use ChatGPT 3.5, it's not secure. Anything you put on there is gone into their training model. Um, so you've got to be very careful with that. Teachermatic, it's a walled garden. It gets stored for 30 days and deleted. No one looks at it. And that is really useful in terms of the latest government guidelines on using AI, which says that we need um, to get parental consent, essentially, before we start using something like ChatGPT. So it, it gets us around that one. And obviously, we're 16 plus as a college. So that's that's really helpful for us as well. Uh, so some of the things that we've we've achieved the onboarding experience with new staff, for example, as I mentioned, learning outcomes, not something your average electrician knows how to write, but suddenly they're able to do it quite straightforward and using Bloom's taxonomy. So they're hitting all those Ofsted buttons as well. Brilliant. Time saving with the quizzes and even the admin staff we've got on board as well with things like the report writing and the email responder. So I've been using, I've been going around the, the college talking to the admin staff and I popped into the learning support office earlier this week as well to talk to them about how they might use uh, Teachermatic to adapt lessons for specific learners and how that might be useful. So before I look at any generators, I thought I'd share with you some outputs that I've got, that I've used or that staff have used using Teachermatic. So this is a lesson that I taught earlier in the week. These are learning outcomes. They are generated straight from Teachermatic. We've got identify, demonstrate, not sure, but identify, demonstrate, explain. That's perfectly OK for the lesson I was teaching. I said I wanted I said the less level I wanted it at. I didn't want it too advanced because we'll do that next week. So this is what we did in the lesson. And it took me seconds to generate that time saving. It's it's absolutely tremendous. And then I just put a picture in. Um, this is something else. And again, I appreciate it's a little bit small on your screens there but it's a worksheet using the worksheet generator. So again, using the same lesson, and actually I uploaded the lesson to the worksheet generator so that it then gave me a worksheet for the students to fill in. And there's a fill the gap, there's a multiple choice, and then lower down the page, there's open responses. So we're really scaffolding the learning a little bit, taking it from, the simple to the more complex skills. And I've popped that straight, cut and paste, copy and paste into class notebook because we use Teams as a college. But you could use that in whatever VLE you use as well. We tend not to print worksheets. We tend to use class notebook instead. So my learners go straight in there um, and straight they can fill in that that uh, that worksheet and again that would have taken me quite a long time to produce and all I had to do was tweak it it was it was just a joy it was so easy and this one is using 
the multiple choice generator to create a quiz based on a lesson. So I uploaded the lesson as a PDF. It created, Teachermatic had created the PowerPoint in the first place which I then uploaded to create the assessment. Yes, it might work with H5P. Interesting, copy and paste. I like that. I've got to go and try that next. Um, and this has absolutely transformed end of lesson assessment in a, in a number of our areas. Health and social care are using it a lot. Catering are using it a little. Um, sport were introduced to it the other day. And then and the teachers are really liking this ability to make a multi choice quiz, upload it straight into forms. Tweak it a little bit, pick the questions you want, delete the questions you don't. If I want five questions, I'll usually ask it for seven because it gives me. You know, one or two that I might not like, so then I can just use the ones I do. The students have their phones. They scan the QR code, they answer the questions. That's my plenary, my assessment, all good to go. And I've got a record of which students actually said which, so that I can pick up on common misconceptions, on student progress. And as students become more and more aware that at the end of my classes, or the end of other people's classes as well, they're gonna have this assessment, they pay a lot more attention during the lesson because they wanna get these questions right. Uh, in terms of future developments for us, we are moving to a model where we're going to give the licenses to new teachers because I think that that's where it has the most value. And we're running a teachermatic competition at the moment and offering prizes and we're trying to get teachers excited, but we're going to use that as a way of, of sharing good practice. Now I'm going to try and move over and share my screen to show you some of the generators and so just bear with me two seconds am i right for time peter or oh we, yeah yeah, yeah i'm yeah, worried about you to getting to see your principal <laughs> that's yeah, right i think we've got a couple we've got a couple of minutes yeah 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 that's yeah. fine she says let's get this one on okay now you um, <laughs> you uh demonstrated this one peter which is my favourite and I was going to demonstrate it. Can you put in the chat if you'd like to see any of them particularly or which ones you're using and you love or which ones you'd like to see? And Peter, maybe you could just um, point me to one after I've shown this one. So this is, Peter said you can use a, a URL to generate multi-choice questions. So I've gone here and I've got a BBC Bite size page speaking and listening but it's a it's specific to catering so i could have uploaded my powerpoint there generate um and what happened to peter when it said the servers were busy top tip put it in the chat try and use uh, teachermatic in the morning before the americans get online because it's it seems to be the afternoon that causes the most problems <laughs> And there we've got that. So we've got a lovely little multiple choice. We can adapt it if we want and we're going to watch the Americanisms as well. But this is the bit that I really like about these. So if you can't see that, maybe zoom in on it. You can export this as a PDF, a bit boring, Word, useful, Moodle, Kahoot, Quizzes, Blockit, Gimkit, Blackboard, Canvas. And given that that list used to be very short, I'm going to say one of the other things I really like about Teachermatic is working with them as a company. They are very, very responsive. So when I first started using Teachermatic, there were a couple of, um, I think there was probably PDF and Word were there with the first ones. And then I'm going, oh, can you can you do it as a this? And somebody else has obviously gone, can you do it as a quizzes? Can you do it? And they've put those in. The Kahoot one is fantastic because it's very complex the way Kahoot sets it out um, and it just does it automatically. And that is absolute gold because there's your assessment. And then we can save that result. I have some folders so I can save it in folders 
Um, put it in that one. And then you can always go back to it as well if you want to. Peter, are there any uh, any comments that that we want to respond to in the chat? Uh, no, I'll I'll pick those up later on. Um, okay. I think um, yeah, that's all good. Yep. So the PowerPoint presentation one that Peter showed, if you used it months ago, have a look at it again because it's way better than it used to be. Um, so don't give up on that one. It's it works really really well now. Uh, it used to be more like the slideshow outliner. Uh, it does really nice PowerPoints now, so that's great. The learning activities one, staff love that. If they've been teaching a very long time, they sometimes just want a new idea because they've got stuck in, you know, using the same ideas, same ideas, same ideas, and it gives them new ideas. So I've seen teachers really sparkle using the, the those um, learning activity ideas. The flashcards are really popular as well. Plenary session activities, again, new staff sometimes or don't really have that bank of ideas and knowledge of different plenary ideas. So it gives them those. Ask the expert. People have had fun with that. Yes. <laughs> the step by step one. I tend to teach digital skills, so I love the step by step one. So uh, a scaffolding for one of my classes. I wanted them to uh, open Office 365 and, and send me an email. Now, some of the students can do that standing on their head. Some of the students can't and they need the scaffolding. They need the instructions. That step by step generator. Is really useful for scaffolding. And I wanted, yeah, we can leave it as that. And I just took what it generated, popped that in the class notebook for my learners, and they can step by step. I had to tweak that one to say how you log into Office 365, but basically it's done it all. And that saved me about 20 minutes. And it me meant that I could have scaffolding that really supported individual learners. And had I not been able to use Teachermatic, they might have either had to do without or rely on their teaching assistant. So that was that was that's really powerful. That step by step one. Uh, some of the catering staff have used it for making shoe pastry and things like that, and they've been very pleased with the outcome they've got from that. And again, just saving a lot of time. Assignment, the email, the email responder I use sometimes. You know those emails where you think I need to respond to this, but I don't really know how to. Uh, lesson observation feedback, I've, I've used that one as well because as a teaching and learning coach, I often give feedback on lessons. And then we've got some of these other ones down here that the admin staff are finding really helpful and useful. And like Peter said, if you some of these we use, I use with the, the students up on the board um, to explain and to model ideas for them. The worksheet one, absolutely brilliant. Know, just like the subject area of the worksheet, all the topics that you want it to cover, generate the worksheet, it's fantastic. And then survey creator. I haven't used all of these, but this YouTube content based one is definitely one that I'm going to be using. I'm going to favorite that right now because that for me is going straight to the top of my list of next to use. Peter, that's me. Thank done, you but so I'm much. Very Dave. happy to answer questions. And if you haven't started out with your teachermatic journey, really, it it's a it, it it really has the potential to free up your teachers, unleash their creativity, give them some more time back. They can actually spend that time with the learners and doing those things that are so important with the learners. Um, sorry, Peter, I interrupted you there. I'll stop sharing. No, no worries. <laughs> Thanks quiet. so much. Um, and if you've got time, you'd maybe answer some of the questions in, in the typing in the chat. 
uh, and I'll carry on, but really appreciate that. And I hope you can see, and this is typical of our user community, how enthusiastic our, our users are. And, and uh, yeah, it was great to hear what's going on at, at West Knotts College. Um, so just uh, continuing with my um, presentation now, um, the uh, multiple choice questions, as, as Dee illustrated, we've got all of these awesome um, export and I'm just going to show you quickly how you can use this with uh, Microsoft Forms. So if I export that multiple choice quiz there as a Word document and I go into my Microsoft account and go to Microsoft Forms, this is how easy it is to make that into a Forms quiz. I just go to Quick Import, upload from this device, to the folder where that is that's that quiz there that word document tell it i want it to be a quiz it says it's going to take a minute it's not there we go and you see literally in less than a minute we've got a quiz built in microsoft forms um, the next one I want to just, show you. Just sort to of quickly say, Peter, which you then just go to PowerPoint, click Insert, yeah, and click on and the form. So it's another it's thirty seconds, yeah. and it's in PowerPoint. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it takes, yeah, any because you get it on Microsoft, you've got the whole Microsoft environment. If it's in Teams, it goes into your Teams gradebook, etc. The next one I'm showing you is a, a marking rubric generator, um, and so here you just put in a title. So staying with this sports uh, anatomy and physiology kind of thing, nutrition. So I'm asking, saying I'm setting my students a group assignment on a presentation on sports nutrition. I can choose the scale that I want. So we've got all sorts of different scales. That's the sort of typical BTEC scale there. And all that the teacher has to do is put in the performance indicators. Click on go. And then that builds a marking rubric that can then be exported as a Word document. Um, do you mention the email generator there? Um, discussion, yeah, yes, it goes into quizzes. Um, the email generator with this one, you just say who the recipient of an email is. You say what the topic is. So say you've got a student who's got poor uh, atten attendance and punctuality, what you want the desired outcome to be, improved attendance and punctuality. Click on generate. And that then writes a first draft of an email for you. And again, you can see the time saving. You'd edit it, check it. And, and the fun thing about this one is we've got all of these different tones. So you might start with a friendly or encouraging email. A couple of weeks later, if you're not seeing any improvement in the um, students' attendance and punctuality, you could write a more assertive one. Um, and the, the, the last one I want to show you is one on smart targets. So here, this is for setting students smart targets. We've got some in here by default. So again, I'm thinking about that student we just mentioned who's got issues around attendance and punctuality, and that will write some smart targets. But you can write in whatever you want there, and it will build smart targets for you. OK, so I'm now going to go back to my presentation. And just um, show you a, a bit more background. So the Ask Someone Famous, this is um, certainly proving very popular and just giving you some examples of how you might use this. Asking Nelson Mandela about promoting peace in Palestine. You see it's giving a very Nelson Mandela type answer, talking about dialogue, empathy, understanding, common ground, building trust. So it does very much build the answers in the voice of the person you're asking for. It does a pretty good job of that asking Einstein how he came up with his theory of relativity here, building on Newton's laws. You know, you're teaching English literature, asking Jane Austen, where did you come up with the idea for Pride and Prejudice? So again, I hope you can see how useful this can be for getting your students interacting with people that you're teaching about, and whatever subject you're teaching, you can bring famous people, alive or dead, real or fictional, into the classroom and the students can interact with them. Um, asking Serena Williams, um, you know, teaching sport again, asking how she prepared for a big tournament like Wimbledon. The next one's a little bit silly, but is real. 
one of our uh, colleges comment, uh, described how they were doing this on LinkedIn. They'd been bringing Vicky Pollard into the classroom. <laughs> and uh, just as an example, and if you see the answer, that's very much in Vicky Pollard's voice. If ever you've wanted to know what Vicky Pollard's views on Brexit are, there it goes. And you can, read, if any of you can do that voice, do the voice in your head. Um, and uh, there you go. So, want to. Um, an English teacher with a passion for. I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that's coming up now. Um, so this is one that we're very excited about. We might come up with a snappier title. We're calling it at the moment the Epistemic Insight. And this is for if you want to ask a question or a topic that goes across a whole range of different subjects. So this is a more academic kind of thing. You know, a very philosophical question. Do we have free will? and looking at how that could be applied across all of these different subjects. And what this does is it produces this wheel. And then you click on the subject. So if you click on history in this wheel, it gives you some ideas for how you could use that in history. Or if you click on psychology, that gives you ideas for how you can do it in psychology. And I can imagine in a BTEC course where you've got all the different units and you want a particular for, a theme to go across those units, this could be very useful. Uh, how that would be done in art. Um, we've got a we're building a suite of um, tools for HR staff, and so that's uh, one on uh, job interviews. Another one that we've done is around building scenarios, and this is this we're building at the moment. Um, and um, you can uh, then see these different scenarios here. So that's building a scenario for construction students around dealing with a, an accident um, uh, on, a, on a building site. So these are the sorts. We're always building new um, tools and um, uh, these are examples of ones that are coming up soon. Just going to show you some feedback now. Now I'm aware that the, um, I'm just going to check the sound is on. Um, the sound didn't come through too well before. It usually does. I hope it does, but we do have subtitles on these. So this is a feedback from a, an advanced practitioner at Guernsey Institute. As an advanced practitioner, we were given a link to teach matic uh, to trial by some of our um, senior leaders who'd been to an AOC conference. And they said, here, we, this looks amazing. Try it, play, see what happens. Okay, and I sorry. tried it and I played and I just thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> this could really change my day, my week, my month, my year. And um, so it went from there. So that's one bit of feedback. I hope you could uh, all hear that OK. I'm going to share some feedback from a, a principal at one of our uh, leading college users, Hull College. And this is something not that was done for us, um, but a, a podcast that we came across where uh, Deb Gray um, talking about how very unusually for a principal, she uh, had to build a course um, and she used Teachamatic to do this. Have you got a favourite one that, that's that's come up recently, a tool or a, or a mechanism or something that's come up from the ground? Oh, I'm a big fan of Teachamatic. So yeah. Teachamatic is a platform that's designed to help teaching staff, frontline teaching staff, produce resources and administration better. So sometimes as a principal, you have to roll your sleeves up. <laughs> you get a project and there's nobody else to do it. You're the one in the hot seat. And I had to write a unit on sustainability for a foundation degree, which was part of a project. So we'd already got a number of platforms in teacher based AIs to pilot because I like to play with a number of different things with staff and then we'll go with the one they like the best or that works for them. And so I needed to generate this unit absolutely from scratch. So I plugged into Teachamatic all of the things I knew it needed to do from my own expertise. And I said, OK, go give me your first iteration. Within 10 seconds, I had a scheme of work. I had 12 sets of lesson plans. I had all the questions. I had activities for class. I had my presentations. And then what I needed to do with that is apply my expertise to it. But I didn't have any fear of a blank page. I wasn't starting from scratch. And it was easier to augment than it was to create. So what that did for me was probably save me about a week and a half's time. And that is a thing of beauty. And if you times that by however many units a typical teacher in a further education college will be responsible for, it makes their life easier. 
Okay, so I think that, again, really describes that approach where you use Teachmatic, you give you that first draft, and then you put yourself in and you build it. And, and Deb there described how she saved a week and a half's work uh, using Teachmatic in a systematic way. A bit about our community we are growing, we are over 20,000, over 160 providers working across different sectors very collaboratively and something that we do as part of that collaboration is we have termly user group meetings and we've got one of those coming up um, at the end of June and just a bit more um, feedback here. Teachmatic can not only plan the lesson, produce a worksheet but it can also end generate multiple choice questions that can be imported into apps such as Blookit and Kahoot literally in under a minute. I started my teaching career 30 years ago and what 22 year old me would have done with teaching at it back then. For me, lesson plans were ideas were sourced from books or through off the shelf generic schemes of work and they followed hours upon hours of customising for lessons. Damn it, half my life passed planning lessons and schemes. Fast forward 30 years and Teachumatic can produce one for me in seconds. Okay, some other favourite, one of our favourite quotes ever is I've got my Sunday afternoons back. Um, senior leader who's a uh, it's the best thing she's seen in 30 years in education uh, and another senior leader talking about the impact it's uh, having in his college um, okay now this if you're not a user of teachmatic at the moment this is a fully functional trial account um, so if you want to copy down that it's just tmat 2024 for the username and password and that will work until the end of the month uh, Seamus, I'm just seeing your um, comment there. That sounds like you've got a free account. Um, so speak to whoever's in charge of Teachmatic at your college and get them to contact um, support at Teachmatic if they can't sort that out for you. Um, so that, that account um, that you're seeing on the screen, um, have a go with it if you're not currently uh, using Teachmatic. Um, so any final questions? If you want to pop them in the chat, um, we're coming to the end. I'm very happy to stay after two o'clock and answer any um, questions. And I'm going to now allow microphones and allow cameras as well. So uh, do feel free to um, to turn your mic on and turn your camera on if you want to ask any questions. If not. If you've got to go now, goodbye. Thank you very much for coming. But I, I say I, I will be staying and my colleague Jeff will be staying. Um, and um, yeah, please do ask any. Just come on the mic if you've got any questions. I see there's a hand up. Uh, so Richard, if you want to come on the mic. Sorry, I was meant to do a reaction and I raised my hand instead. Apologies. <laughs> OK, <laughs> no worries. Cheers then. Anybody else, if you've got a question, just um, yeah, turn your mic on and talk. Can I just ask you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Hi, can I just ask you, um, that was very useful, thank you. Um, can I just ask you whether there's any, um, like little, for example, if I just want to see how to do one of those things again, is there something on Teachmatic itself where it's just got a quick demonstration? Uh, that's almost like that question was set up. You see these little blue eyes here? Um, do you know what? I can't because I'm so useless at this. I've, I don't know where the screen's gone. All I've got is your name, so I can't see anything apart oh, from right. your name. At, at the top, you should see... Um, oh, no, I'm not... I'm not. No, I am sharing still. Is everyone, is everyone seeing my screen? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I've seen see one it. or two people. But we will have access to the video? This video? Uh, yes, the videos will be shared. I'm sorry. I mean, I've, right. I've shared my screen as per normal, so I'm not sure why. You it's know, but it my, should be in the video. Time. But there's a there's a blue eye on every single generator, and if you yeah. click on that, it gives you guidance on how to use it. Oh, brilliant. Okay, that's lovely. Thanks very much. Okay. Hello. Hello. Are you seeing the screen? Okay. Yes, I am. I just. Oh, 
Sorry, thank you for that presentation. It was fantastic. I just wondered, is it possible to just buy a license as an individual? Yes, absolutely. If you go to the Teachomatic site, it's um, I think nineteen ninety nine a month for um, if actually if we go here pricing. Hope you're seeing this. Um, you can buy individual licenses here. Um, so oh, the yeah. standard is ninety nine pound a year. Um, the professional is one hundred and eighty pound a year, and you can buy those on a, a monthly basis as well. Is that sorry? I need the difference between the features. Is there, isn't it? There's a difference. It's a number, number of generations a day. You get thirty goes a day with a standard, yeah. or one hundred and fifty goes a day with a professional. And right. when organisations buy licences, they get the professional licence. Right. OK. OK. Any more questions? Hi, I just wanted to ask, um, thank you so much for your presentation. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, I just do. wanted to ask, is there any way of, on, power, uh, on the PowerPoint, is there any way that we can get more than 10 slides? Um. I think it's limited to 10 if it is limited to 10. It's, I've, I've not actually pushed the limit on it. If there is a limit, it will be because the AI does come some with, with limitations to how much it can produce. And the PowerPoint does sometimes time out when it's very when the AI says it's very busy. And I would guess that if it goes above 10, it's more likely to time out. But what you could do is. Um, yeah, 10 is the limit. I guess that's because it's more likely to time out going above that. You can certainly add in additional slides yourself. Um, you can. Seamus, um, I'm seeing your. Can we just pick up Seamus' point just briefly now? Uh, come Peter, to Peter? Peter? Yeah. Peter? Yes. You can use the slideshow outliner and you can have any number of slides as you like with that. And that can be important. Right, well, there you go. That's a good tip. Uh, no Seamus, thank I'm, you. Seamus, I'm you've got an organisational link that you own. That sounds like you're on a free account, so there's something not right there. Speak to whoever is in charge at your college of Teachomatic, and if they can't resolve it, get them to email support at Teachomatic. You're, it sounds like for some reason you're, you're, you're on a free account. It could be if your college has only bought 50 accounts and you're number 51 or 52, that you've been told you've got a Teachomatic account, but in fact the college has run out of accounts and they need to buy some more. OK, anyone else want to just go on the mic Hi. and call out a question? Yes. Hi, Peter. Thanks for the presentation. Great stuff. Um, in the lesson plan, you have the Bloom's taxonomy uh, um, yep. set out there. I believe you can also use Rosenshine. I've seen a previous presentation. You say that. How do yes. you get that to change within the generator? The Rosenshine is, is coded into the back end. So, so Rosenshine's principles are coded into the back end of this generator, and then we've got okay. blooms in the front end. OK, so it's already got Rosenshine in. Yeah, yeah, that's been coded in. Yeah. OK, right. OK, Thank you. any other questions? Jeff, did you see any questions in the text that we didn't answer that we might answer? But if, if anyone has got, if anyone asked any questions and we didn't answer it in the text, please do um, do call it's out. Worth mentioning that um, we have another lesson plan generator based on the solo, um, <clears throat> the Biggs and Collis uh, model as well. It's a separate generator though, um, which is really nice. So if I search solo, that should find it, shouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. I think it right, okay, it's not finding that at the moment. So is it down at the bottom, Jeff? Oh it's inactive at the moment. Uh, oh, that's why we can't see. That's why it's not finding it. It's not turned on at the moment. I'll turn okay. On now, actually. Okay. Any any more questions? Well, Jeff's going to turn that on, then I can show it to you. Can we personalise lessons based on students' le level? Absolutely. So the personalisation is done in many ways. Bloom's taxonomy 
kind of gives you personalization, but it's level two, you know, you're focusing on knowledge and comprehension. As you're moving up the levels, then you add the higher cognitive skills. You can put the level into the title, so you can put level three or entry, entry three, et cetera, and it will then come up with that. Um, or um, you can, with a lot of the generators, we've got this complexity slider, and that enables you to do that personalization. OK, I'm just going to show you this solo one that. Where would I find it, Jeff? Yeah, if you refresh a page and you look for solo, you should find oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's why I need to refresh, of course. <laughs> there we go. So this is an alternate lesson plan generator. You see here, you can you focus on particular. Things that you want the students to do, and then that will build you a lesson plan around that. So is that going to be permanently live, Jeff, or are we still working on that? No, it should be permanently live. It's my mistake. It should have been live um, yesterday. OK, so so you see this. It was a, quite a nice attractive table lesson plan and you can if you just copy that into word that will copy as that table so you says that in in word simple as that okay any any more questions let's see some more so solo is gaming momentum over the bloom. That's that's good to know. I, well, it's interesting to know. Um, how long is the free access trial? The, the the free access trial, Marion, will last until the end of the month. And you can share it with your colleagues if you want. Can well, I just ask, um, you know, if you're writing assessment booklets from assessment criteria, is there any easy, which one would you recommend to use? An assessment booklet? Yeah, we tend to use for our level one or entry three, we tend to create assessment booklets. So I suppose a bit like handouts, but it's within a booklet. We've got, what well, I think maybe the worksheet might do that one. OK. Probably so what you need to have, do is... Uh, is you need to use several generators and then compile all those the outputs of those into a book workbook separately. We've got this worksheet one that you might want to have a go at. OK, so we tend um, to do a lot of in pre employment programs, so. Yeah, but okay. if, if it doesn't do what you want, email us because this is, you know, said so this is how we get our ideas from talking to people. And that does sound like something that we should be able to support that kind of thing. So okay. have a go with the tools that are on there. And if it doesn't do what you need, send send me an email. OK, Pete, how do I, have, have, I, have we got your email or how do I'm I I'm just contact? typing it now. OK, um, thank you. So how many generations is a free trial? You get five a day for a week and then one a day. We have to be very restrictive on that because it costs us money. So it's peter at teachermatic.com is my email address. It costs Thank us you. money every time people use it. So we, we can't really afford to support people using Teachermatic free. The idea behind a free trial is to. Um, oh, so I'm confusing it. The free logon I've shown you gives you. It's got 4000 goes a day on it. So as long as we haven't got lots of you doing lots, it'll be fine. But if you go to the free trial um, that's available. Here. That gives you five a day, just to clarify the difference. The one that I've shared is, is theoretically pretty much unlimited. This one. Do we have a long term contract? With, uh, we, we don't have a long term contract um, and we don't just use OpenAI. We're using Mistral as well. And we are looking at alternatives, including Gemini and Claude. And in the future, that's very much we see ourselves as, um, you know, connecting with all the best of breed. 
um, that, uh, and this is one of the advantages of Teachermatic, is we will see which large language model is best for which particular tasks, and then we will use that. Okay, any other questions? Can we use it for research purposes? Yes, I mean, there are research tools in Teachermatic. Um, and um, if that's what you mean. Um, so, um, I mean, Joseph, do you want to, um, if, if, if you want to come on the mic, if this doesn't do, but you see we've got things like, if you click on research here, um, we've got, see that doesn't pull up, all, Jeff, that doesn't pull up all the research ones. It doesn't pull up the, um, that's something to look at. Um, we've got things like research methodology, Likert Survey Creator, Likert Survey Creator, um, Survey Creator, and the Survey Creator will build you a survey. If you're familiar with Likert Survey, the sort of strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree type response to all this, and the research methodology one. If you want to research a particular topic, you just put that in there. I mean, that me and Jeff talk about a lot. We both do the other side of 60 and talk about how our memories are not what they were. Um, and this will give you ideas for doing research on age and memory. So, yes, yeah, so we do have some tools to support research. And that's great to work with students on giving them ideas for um, research projects. And you see that, yeah, come up with uh, some ideas there about doing a study on age and memory. That's a good tip there. I'll go out and get some sunshine. OK, any more questions? Assessment criteria with which certain qualifications? Um, we're kind of qualification agnostic. It will work for any qualification. And um, in the criteria on the um, uh, rubric generator if you if there's any scales that you would want us to add i mean, talked to us about that and uh, as long as we think it's one that there would be a de demand for we could build those in okay any more questions yes i'll be sharing a link to the recording and you can share that with your colleagues OK, well, I'm going to wrap up in a two or three minutes unless anyone's got any further questions. Um, do come on the mic if there's anything else you want to say.